What would your fans maybe not know about you? Um, that I am polite. People swear that I'm so rude. And I'm like, it's not that I'm rude. It's just sometimes when I have to say something, I have to say it. And when I think something, I have to say it. Because if I don't, my tongue will be itching. Like, I have to say it. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. What's up, guys? Xavier here with you for the How'd You Do It podcast, the very first podcast of 2019. I'm at Car Studios in Hollywood, hanging out with the man, Denzel Dion. How are you, mate? I'm fine. How are you? Thank Good. You, you look great. Me. Thank you. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Yeah, I didn't actually notice that you had these diamonds as well. Yes, I have two of the jewels. Yeah, you yeah, do. You got cool. a few of them. Yeah, I have like four. When did you get that? It's been like two years. Oh, okay. Didn't yeah. I didn't see that in your yeah, videos. Yeah. I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. People can't really see, but yeah. Well, first of all, man, so this podcast is basically, it's about digital, digital entrepreneurs like mm. yourself and how people, you know, how they did it, how they turned their hobby into their job. And that's what I basically want to chat to you about. Mm. And so the first thing about you is obviously what's so striking about you online is just how confident you are. Mm -hmm. You're unapologetic. Where did you get that from? Um, I think being in New York, like growing up in New York, that's just how you have to be. Cause I, like in New York, it's just it's just a city of everything. Everyone's always different. And like where I came from, like the Bronx, New York, I was just always different from everyone in my school. And like oh, Denzel, why are you wearing this? Why are you wearing that? I'm like, I just it's me. Like I don't care. Like I just learned not to care. And yeah, I just live my life apologetically, and I feel like it just goes very well. You know, like not being sorry for who you are, just living the way you want to live. Right. And how uh, how was that accepted? Like by your friends and in, in school and everything. Um, in school, people just have to deal with it. It's like, I've been to the same school for like seven years, so it just came to the point where people were just like, you know what, you're like, you can't, I don't say you can't hate me, but you just, ha I'm just like such a like nice person. It's like, okay, I don't like it, but I do. You know what I mean? But um, it's just that, how do I say this? Um, when you're yourself all the time and people see that and people see it's not an act, they start to like you for who you are. Because it's like, damn, if he's being like himself, I can be myself too. Got yeah. So I was. Um, that's great. Great to hear. Um, I was talking to your buddy Ricky Thompson mm -hmm. a little while ago when he was on the podcast, and and he was saying. I mean, you know, he's very much like you, where he's this huge personality mm -hmm. and very unapologetic yes. and just hilarious. Um, but he was saying he was a super quiet person in, in high school, and and um, you know, and didn't have many friends and was bullied. And it wasn't until he sort of you know came out of himself and and um, and started being who he was that he um, you know hit his stride and fell into mm -hmm. his career. It doesn't sound, it sounds like with your situation, you didn't really have that period, would you no, say? Yeah, um, I I was never really quiet. I was like, for a teensy bit until like, I just, it was just like, I was, it was never a moment that I was quiet. Same with Ricky, with Ricky, like when I first met Ricky, I was like, Ricky, like, why are you like not saying what you want to say? I always told him, say what you want to say. Cause sometimes like we will have like this friend group and like someone say something to me, I can see like it hurts his feelings. I'm like, Ricky, like speak up. Like if, if like, talk about your feelings if it hurts you it hurts you so that's why I just like that he's just very open now he says what's on his mind he's very apologetic I feel like life is easier that way yeah I, I agree I, as I said I still struggle to imagine Ricky being quiet I know I, <laughs> when he told me that I was like are you serious are you sure he was like yeah I was so quiet I was like okay just to go go back a little bit how did it start off for you how did you how did you go from just being a personality and a kid in New York to uploading to Vine um, the thing was, okay, so with Vine, um, <clears throat> this was around like twenty, yeah, like 2014, um, I used to work at the YMCA, I was a YMCA kid, and um, this new app came out called Vine or whatever, and I was just like, I want to see if I could be funny in six seconds, because I was always like the class clown, I was just like, always made like people laugh, so I decided to go on Vine, I made a video, and then I deleted the app, like I didn't, I just deleted it, so then with my first paycheck I got from the YMCA, I came to LA. I only had like money to stay here for like a day and a half, but like it was worth it. So I came here, then I went, I'd have no friends, no, like nobody. So I just went to City Walk because I was just like doing touristy stuff. And um, I went, it was like Pia Mia. She was playing at those free concerts at City Walk. And um, people were asking me for pictures. Like, oh my God, you're that guy from the video, like that Vine video. I was like, excuse me, what? She was like, this is you, right? And like not knowing, I got off the app, but like it blew up, but I didn't know because the Vine, like the app was deleted. Wow. So after that, I just downloaded loaded vine again and i just i was like, okay this is gonna be an everyday thing so then that's just what it became. you just uploaded one video deleted the app and it just blew up yeah i just deleted the app because it was just like one i didn't have enough storage on my phone so i was like this is the only thing i don't use <laughs> so i deleted it and then yeah what was the video um 
What was the video? Oh, it was just um like when you get um you get caught eating in class. Right. Yeah. Just and yeah. I, I, wow. That's crazy that that happened, but I'm so happy that it happened because like I'm here now. Okay. So all right. So the video's blown up. You obviously. Clear off a little storage on the phone, re- reorganize the priorities. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Bump it up a few notches. So what did you do from there? Did you start uploading every day? Did you get really serious about yeah, it? Yeah, um, I just uploaded every day. It wasn't me being serious. It's just I wanted to. Like every day I would come after school, I would just make a vine. Just because I wanted to. It was like the, the thrill and the rush. And then when you see like the likes, the comments, and then the followers going up, it's like, okay, that's like my motivation to keep going. It was just like a thing I had to do. If I didn't post a day, I felt, I was like, damn, I let them down. Like I didn't post. Like it was just like And that. people were, you, you started to get fans that were waiting for your content yeah the thing was before vine i did have instagram followers but my instagram followers they were never like domestic so like that's because the explore page was weird back then Mm -hmm. so like all my like followers were from like bolivia and like weird countries so i never really got stopped i was just on instagram i made like funny pictures like comic pictures because there was no video on instagram at that time oh yeah yeah there really wasn't yeah yeah. what a time to be alive you know (laughs) you have this i mean not that you've not that you're much different um, in, you know, now that I'm meeting you in person compared to online, but you know, you still you're very uh, quite reserved and you're very polite. Mm-hmm. Um, online, as I said, you're this unapologetic, huge personality. Mm-hmm. What would your fans maybe not know about you? What would they not? What would be surprising to them? Do you think um, that I am polite? People swear that I'm so rude, and I'm like, <laughs> it's not that I'm rude. It's just sometimes when I have to say something, I have to say it. And the thing is, th- this is what I'm trying to work on how to say it in a different way. It's not about what you say, it's about how you say it. And when I think something, I have to say it, because if I don't, my tongue will be itching. Like, I have to say it. Like, it's on. Like, it just makes me go crazy. So pretty much, no, I feel like some people know, but um, what people would not know about me is that when I'm tall, people say, whoa, you're so tall in person. Um, two, that I'm very polite. Three, I am very understanding. Cause sometimes like some like online sometimes I say if you cross me like that so even though it is true but sometimes I like to hear what I like to hear both sides I like to hear other people and like understand what's going on from their point of view basically instead of just what I go off instead of assuming okay that's good that's a good answer mm-hmm. nice that's uh, it's actually pretty rare yeah people to do that yeah even though it sounds pretty simple it's pretty rare it's pretty rare yes and I'm like okay wait maybe why am I think like this let me let them speak let me hear what they have to say then I'm like oh okay cool it's not as worse as it seems because like if you don't get an answer you assume the worst so it's such an oversaturated market now mm-hmm. like social media and YouTube everyone is trying to break through what do you think it is about you that helped you cut through the noise when that's why I'm trying to get out but no um I feel like just being authentic I feel like everyone wants to be like somebody like you can see someone who make videos and say okay this is just like someone else I watched or you see the same edits or you see the same punchlines or you see the same jokes I feel like with me and some other YouTubers as well when you just do things and you're just yourself no one is like you so I feel like that's why people keep coming back to my channel that's why people mess with me because like Denzel you're just so real and I am sometimes I, I do say like I don't push around you sometimes I do step over the line a bit but it's like I feel like you have to do that in life you know like just with my best or worst dress videos like I don't I like making them but one thing I don't like is that I have to be honest and like when I don't like something but I really like the person it's like Ugh. You know, yeah. So that's like my best worst YouTuber, like my Coachella YouTuber outfits. That one, oh, that got me the wrong side of that many YouTubers. Of yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'll see them in person, and I'm just gonna act like it's fine. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, okay, whatever. So people like Danza, thank you so much. And I was like, you listen to me. Look at you. Look at the way you look today. Just like Danza, thank you. I'm like helping you. Okay, you're not gonna hear it from your friend. You will hear it from me. Right. Tell me about, I mean, that's, that's like a good point you make there. Tell me, have you, can you give me one example of situation you've ended up in by sharing your opinion on your own YouTube channel, which you're entitled to do, but running into that person and having to deal with it? Um, I want, I want names. Oh, I want you want details. names? Okay. I'll give you names. Um, Tana. So I'm friends with Tana. Okay. And, um, after I made my, even though her coach, okay, this is so weird. She misread it wrong, but my coach video, I said, she looks good. I said, if she, like, the old Tana I know would not wear this, or whatever. So then I made this roasting YouTubers Coachella video, whatever. Then her and James Charles, we make it, right? But in my video, I did come for James Charles, right? But, not, like, in a light, playful way. I was like, he's very nice or whatever, but I have to talk about this outfit. But his other outfits were cool. It was just this one outfit. So that was, like, the picture that went around him when he went viral with all the stuff that was going on. And the thing was, people called me the bad guy because I said, this picture is edited. This is not what I saw in person. 
That's what I said. Okay. And people say, Denzel, this is bullying and all that. But once the picture got out what I was talking about, it's like, Denzel, you're so right. <laughs> so um, when that picture got out, whatever, them two made a video and then it came about me. It was like, Denzel Dion. And then Tana was like, you know what? You just can't come for his outfit because he knows what he's wearing, whatever. And James was like, yeah, he likes my outfit. But um, it's crazy how he talked about me in his video, but when he sees me in person, he's very nice and all that extra stuff and all that stuff. And... I made a response video, and I was like, I just said I didn't like your outfit. I said you're a nice human being. I just didn't like your outfit. And he thinks I don't like him. A lot of people think I don't like him. It's just that I'm just very standoffish. I have, like, if I'm not talking to you, I will have a resting bitch face. Like, I will just, I'm not, I don't smile all the time. I'm, what am I smiling for, you know? So that's what, yeah, that's the situation that ha- um, happened. Then I saw Tana at Playlist. And I came up to her, I was like, Tana, what's up? Like, what's what's the deal? She's like, are we beefing now? I was like, I don't know, are we? I thought we were friends. She's like, no, I was just, it was just very misunderstood or whatever. I'll make a public apology. I'm like, I'm, I don't need a public apology. I just needed to know. You know, it was just for the video. It was just, you know, trying to start something for the video. I'm like, yeah. Tana, you know. Like, girl, come on. She was like, I know. I just made a public apology. I was like, okay, cool. But I love Tana. She gets it now. I love the way she dresses and everything. She was like, thank you. And that's it. Drama, all right. Drama, drama, drama. <laughs> Jeez, the, uh, the YouTube world is a weird one, right? It is. I feel like people create drama on purpose. I'm a drama-free person. Like, I don't like drama. Before, I used to, like, like drama because, like, used to, oh, it's drama, drama. And now I was just like, okay, can we get, like, past it? Can mm-hmm. we get, you know? Well, the hard thing is, I mean, you know, you've got to have an opinion. That's what people come on to to, to watch. Exactly. You know? But that, those opinions... They do hurt others. They're going to get you in trouble every now and again. Yeah, and it just, I just, I've learned that. And just, like, um, the people who always have a problem with me talking about their outfits and stuff because I never want to talk about YouTubers because I hate YouTubers. You're using me for views, using me for thumbnails, whatever. But I'm like, well, you, t- you YouTubers, whatever. You guys claim you guys are celebrities. You guys claim you guys, whatever you guys claim. Okay, I'm doing exactly what Fashion Police does on YouTube. Mm-hmm. They don't do it on TV anymore and no one's doing it on YouTube, so I'm going to do it. And since you guys want to put yourself in these situations, you guys want to go on the red carpet, pictures are getting taken, you're getting on Getty. So therefore, I will be using the pictures. I will be saying what I have to say. End of story. I do help some people because I'm like, maybe if you wear this next time, next time, I don't know if it's a coincidence. I'm not saying it. if it's a coincidence or not. I don't know if I did it. They happen to be wearing it. They happen to be wearing it. And that's all I ask for. I'm helping you. And that's it. I just like to help people. So they should really be thanking you. Yeah, exactly. Instead I'm, of getting upset. That's what I said in my video today. I said, I don't know why you guys are mad at me. Like, look at the way you guys dress now. You guys are not dressing like this over a year ago. I don't know what stylist. You guys hear what I have to say. And that's all. Was this about, it wasn't about the Golden Globes, was it? Yeah. No, no, the Golden Globes is different because that's where actors and stuff. But, like, let's say, um, like, when the streamies come again or the VMAs, the VMAs is where all the YouTubers go to. And they try to do some outrageous outfit. And it's like, know your limits. No, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, n- know something else. Just because it's, like, name brand or, like, your stylist. Not every stylist is right. And I do talk about the stylist, too, because I'm like, mm. Yeah. yeah, it's just, yeah, it's the whole thing and a half. <laughs> it is. It's a whole thing and a half, we'll leave it at that. Um, man, so talking about, you know, YouTube and social media in general being so oversaturated, can you, do you have any, we have a, uh, a lot of aspiring YouTubers who, who listen to this podcast mm-hmm. and watch this series. Do you have any advice for people who are just sort of starting out and don't really know what they're going to do? Yes. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I feel like you never know what you want to do until you get into the flow. Like, let's say you want to do fashion, you keep doing YouTube, it's not for you. It's just like going to college and taking courses that are not for you until you find what you really want to do. I will say for aspiring YouTubers, I always say this, this sounds so cliche, but you have to be yourself. You have to be yourself. You don't need the best camera. You don't need the best lighting, but don't have the ho- like the most bad lighting. Um, I feel like just being yourself, I hate saying this, but you have to hop on some trends. If you're over here trying to make it fast, you have to at least hop on a trend. To if you like if you're in it for the gain aspect, hop on a trend and then be yourself. You know, you can always make something different. Like everyone yeah. who does the same trend, yeah, it's the same trend, but my video will be different for someone else's video because the way I did it and the way I curated it and the way I planned it will be different for someone else. So I will say you don't need the best lighting, you don't need the best camera, because people swear they need thousand dollar cameras and thousand dollar lights. Good lighting, you can record on your phone. Mm-hmm. You can record iMovie. You don't have to buy Final Cut because I feel like with people who are trying to start YouTube, they don't have the funds, and they think it costs a lot of money. Mm-mm. You have a phone. We have sunlight. Be yourself. That's it. Tags do work. And trends. That's it. And consistency. You have to be consistent. Okay. Like, you can't say you want to do YouTube and post once every three months. How are you going to get discovered? Like, how? Yeah. You have to keep doing Like, when I started YouTube, I did have Instagram followers, but I started YouTube February 2016. It took me until October to gain, like, 
30,000. Like, from February 2016 to, like, October, I had, like, 35,000. And then I was, like, and I was, just, I was just doing story times and just be myself. And I was, like, damn, there's this trend going on. I was, like, oh, I hate hopping on trends. I hate being like everyone else. I was, like, no, let me just hop on it. it the video was so hard for me to edit. This is what put my editing skills to test. The video is still not edited correctly. I watch it now. <laughs> but it's the highest viewed view on my channel. The highest viewed video. Which, I, one, which one is that? Which it was like a lyric prank on a stock. Like when the lyric pranks were out and I did it on a stalker that I had in New York. And it got 4 million views. And that's what pushed me to like 100K. That, that video is what like changed my YouTube thing. I always say if I never made that video, I'd probably be like at 60K right now. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was like, you have to. After that, I was like, okay. So that's why everybody was like, Denzel, I'm trying to gain. I don't know what to do. I'm like, you don't have to collab with anyone. I barely, the only person you will see on my channel is Ricky. That's it. I don't really collab with anyone. But before, it was like a pride for me not to collab with anyone. Because I was like, you know, I want to say I got this by myself. I don't want to say like, oh, you're here because of this person. I, I can't. So... Pretty much it. Just be yourself. Consistency is key. You have to be consistent. That's with everything in life, though. You have to keep. And it took obviously took you a while to realize that if you were saying that you didn't, you uploaded a video, then didn't do another one until like the next year or something, right? Yeah. When I, yeah. oh my God, I was like, guys, next week? No, next year. <laughs> <laughs> next year. So See now, you later. Yeah, no problem. All right, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming on. That was uh, great to learn your story. I um, it was super informative. Perfect. Thank you so much for having me. Of course, me. guys. You've been listening to the How'd You Do It podcast. My name is Av Brinkman. I've been hanging out with Denzel. Really appreciate it, mate. Have a uh, have a great week. Good luck with the fashion line and the acting classes and everything you got going on. Thanks so much, and Perfect. we'll uh, we'll catch you guys next me. week. Yes.